Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special Pokemon showdown VGC kind of thing we're doing here. It's the Tabletop Extra Life weekend event. It's going to be a very fun event. And I'm Matthias, also known as Moth Eyes. I'm joined by Eric, also known as King Levchuk. Yes, it is an exciting day here at St. Clair. We are doing a fun day filled with tabletop activities. We have a whole bunch going on. We have four VGC players out today competing for the glory. We also are collecting donations from Extra Life. If you do exclamation mark dot Extra Life, you'll be able to donate. Our goal for today is $750, so please help us reach that. We're going to have a fun full day of activities. We're going to start off with Pokemon today. So we're starting off with Pokemon, but before we move quite into Pokemon... What, what is all this money from Extra Life going to for people who are unfamiliar, maybe just tuning in? Yeah, so if you're new here and you haven't followed uh, the club's Extra Life campaigns before, all of this money is going to the London Children's Health Foundation in London, Ontario. It is the closest children's hospital to us. All of this money goes towards them. Extra Life is a charity that focuses on gaming to heal children. It's my yeah. shirt here. So Extra Life, we have done Extra Life here at St. Clair for the past three years. We are going on our fourth year. We are going bigger and better than we ever have before. So we hope you enjoy it. enjoy the rest of today. Yeah, it's going to be a great day full of lots of fun. We'll be seeing more of that later. But now let's focus and dial in to what's going to be shown here very shortly. It is going to be a very interesting mashup. Maybe some familiar faces if you've been around the St. Clair campus. It's going to be Daniel Banner, also known as Mr. Danners, versus Owen Manta of the Valorant team fame. So this is looking to be a very interesting matchup. Would you like to give a little bit of foresight on these teams, Eric? Yeah, uh, we'll start with Owen teams here. It's a pretty standard team. We're looking at Incineroar, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, Urshifu, Fluttermane, Landorus, and Raging Bolt. This is your pretty box standard team right now. Very strong. A lot of hard hitters for Owen here. Oh, one thing I do need to mention is we might have a special guest third caster coming in here intermittently, but we'll see if he's there or not. Are you there, Mystery Ghost Caster? The answer is no. <laughs> no Ghost Caster. Deafening silence. Is That's okay. Let's now. go over Dan's here right now. Dan <laughs> is running a sort of more gimmicky uh, water, uh, water team. We're looking at this more throwback to a Gen 8 style team. We have Latios. We've got Barraskuda, Colossal. Uh, Whimsicott. I love Whimsicott. Whimsicott's such a funny <laughs> little guy. Uh, Incineroar and Rillaboom. Your main thing you're looking for here is that Barrascuta Colossal combo to get up that Swift Swim, get up that Weakness Policy Steam Engine combo. A lot of different powerful options here. Yeah, Latios is an interesting pick. We usually don't see Latios all too much in these typical teams. Owen is definitely going in for more typical run-of-the-mill team. Just with those heavy hitters, Incineroar, Ochre Pond, or Fluttermane, Landorus, and Raging Bolt. Now as we load in this first Swiss round, we'll see what this matchup is going to be. Owen starting off with the Incineroar and Raging Bolt versus the Colossal Latios team. Up there it is. And I think the method of the Latios is you want to maybe use the flip turn a little bit slower than the Bear Bear Scooter. looking pretty good for Mr. Daniel right now. Yeah, Latios is more of a special attacker than a physical attacker, so I wouldn't be shocked if, we, if he honestly just clicks. Forgot I'd stream him. No, uh, no, good. <laughs> we are looking, I wouldn't be shocked if we see a Draco Meteor right off the bat hitting into Owen's Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt, kind of a scary option for a lot of this team. So I wouldn't be shocked if that's what happens instantly. I mean, you're seeing this, uh, we're seeing with uh, the Raging Bolt here. It does have a Salt Vest, so it might tank it, but hard to say. Latios hits pretty hard. There's the Terra coming out right out of the gate. Let's see if this is going to be. Ooh, Terra, the Raging Bolt into a Fairy type, trying to block that Draco Meteor. And look, Terra didn't break stream today. Yeah, there we go. It's running on the brand. A new setup. It's going to be smooth sailing from here. Ooh, oh, it's hacked. Detected. The AC-130. Double protect. It's trying to bait out and see what Owen's going to do here. Oh, the fake out. Fake out. And a good double protect. Going out from Mr. Daniels there. Yeah, this also puts Owen to a uh, rough position. He's shown off. He's already burned his fairy type Terra here. I know Dan isn't going to click that uh, Draco Meteor into the Raging Bolt. Oh, no. 
Now he's free to flip turn into whatever he wants here. Let's see if he's gonna flip turn into the Colossal. Get that steam engine roaring pretty soon. Yeah, that steam engine weakness policy here. Here, one of the great benefits of Colossal might was such a powerful monster back in the Gen 8 era, the Sword and Shield era. Exactly, an old pick, but it seems to be quite capable still in the current gen. Just not what you usually see. But hey, maybe that is what you need to answer against these heavy hitters on the side of Owen's side. Yeah, if I'm Owen here, I'm probably looking for the parting shot, honestly, into the Colossal. Really, Incineroar is not going to do much for the rest of this matchup. It is good against the Latios, but really, what else is Latios going to do? You have to be prepared for this end game here. It is seeing the Terra fire on the side of Mr. Danners here. He's going to the power jump to the Incineroar, but what is Owen's answer here? Flip turn into Colossal. Colossal just eating that up, but he is going to get the weakness policy and the steam engine. Four times speed, two times special attack. <laughs> This is looking like the hard carry on the side of Mr. Janus. Gets the setup, gets the switch out, and now oh, he's gonna switch into probably a support for this Colossal. No. He's gonna get some real boom. I don't, I don't hate that pick. I mean, you need to start finding ways to deal with this Raging Bolt. That Raging Bolt could be a problem in the end game here. I don't really see how much he has to deal with this Raging Bolt. He doesn't have anything that can really counter out this very all too well. Avoiding the overheat. Yeah, real air heat wave really sucks that he missed that heat wave. It would have done maybe not a ton of damage, but a good amount of damage. I'm surprised he didn't just try and take out this. Maybe he's trying to get a hard read on. Well, oh no, me. Parting shot to Rillaboom. Not what I would have expected. I mean, works out. If I'm Owen, I probably parting shot into the Colossal because now you're looking back at a zero zero a zero Colossal. Still got the plus four speed, but now it's got. Uh, just a zero attack and doesn't have that special attack boost anymore. This is not looking like it's going well for Mr. Danner so far, especially with this. <laughs> this swap in here, the Landorus, is going to be very good against this Colossal here. Let's see, did Fake out with Fake. Reelaboom here. He has a choice to make. What do you do? Is it going to be the Landorus or is it going Raging Bolt. Now he's committing the Fago onto the Raging Bolt. He's not even worrying about this lander. It's, does he swap out the Colossal? Because this Colossal doesn't have much to do against this lander. It's, and it's very, very weak as well. No, Colossal's in a bad position here. Uh, withdrawing the Raging Bolt. Oh. Putting back an Incineroar. Putting back an Incineroar. Really sort of forcing Rillaboom to have to switch out here. It's at minus two. You do not want it to stay at minus two. Yeah. Mr. Danner's gonna go for the swap out though. Or the fake out. And it's fake not out misses. Gonna land on anything here. It's not gonna be worth much of anything. No, he'll hit the heat wave into the incineroar, so we'll see how much that does. Let's see. I don't think it's gonna do all too not much. A as lot. He's not a lot doesn't have the special attack boost anymore. And that's a plus one. That's plus one with the Terra boost. Jeez, this is looking bad for Mr. Danners, but Owen still doesn't really have an advantage over him either. He's just playing a little bit more consistently, and Danners' plan is not taking off right now. Let's see how this one works out, though. This Rillaboom just kind of dead in the water here, not going to do all too much damage. No, the question is, how does he beat... I think he still needs Rillaboom. So I think he has to switch out Rillaboom. He needs Rillaboom for the later game. So I think you have to keep Rillaboom alive, switch out, mate, switch out, bring in Incineroar, try and get Rillaboom back. I don't disagree with the Protect here. We're probably gonna see Parting Shot from Incineroar actually into Colossal, try and get it back down to zero. One thing I can't understand right now is why Mr. Danners is not going for the power gem on this Incineroar. It would do, I think, a considerable amount of damage here. Yeah, it would do a lot of damage. I think he's worried that if Colossal goes down, what's gonna happen? See the Fake Out and Incineroar not gonna do much, and the Sludge Bomb in Incineroar doesn't get the poison, but you do get that heal from Grassy Terrain. Yeah, this Grassy Terrain gonna make this <laughs> match a long one here, making sure everyone is topped up and healthy. Now, committing the power gem to this Incineroar. I think we're going to see a swap out on the Incineroar, though. Probably parting shot this turn. I 
had to make a guess. Let's see. Fake out on the other side. Into the Landris. The Landris. Good read by Owen. Really good read by Owen. A great block there. We're going to see the power jump come out. Into the Incineroar. Just misses the knockout. And there's the parting shot. Getting Colossal back down to zero. So now with no setup in sight. All this Colossal has to show for that flip turn. It's a speed boost. And a little bit of missing health. <laughs> yeah, you really he got that plus four. He has the plus four speed. It is going to be the fastest thing on this field right now. The question is how do you use that? Here Especially, comes Urshifu. Is this this is a single strike Urshifu. Yeah, it's a single strike Urshifu, a pretty strong Pokemon, all things considered. I uh, my read is in Cinema Parting Shots, the Urshifu. But I don't know. I don't think you could ignore this Landorus right now. It is the one that is most likely to take out this Colossal. Yeah, the Landorus is putting on a ton of pressure. The other issue Dan Darius has to worry about here is how is he going to deal with that Raging Bolt down the line? He has a Psychic type Latio. He's a Psychic Dragon type Latios. Raging Bolt is very good. It's also Terra Fairy right now. A Dragon Pulse from a Raging Bolt is going to do a ton of damage into Latios. He has no Fairy type coverage here. Not no fairy type move, coverage. Poison. Yeah. A poison type or a steel type move. Doesn't have one. <laughs> oh, and down goes Incineroar. Wow, close combat doing so much there. I'm sure you're losing stats, but not going to matter all too much when you're dealing out that much damage. Yeah, the true power of Incineroar there. Or er, 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 there. Uh, they're big <laughs> furry guys. Big cat like <laughs> creatures. They do cat a lot bears, of damage. Similar thing. Ma mammalian. Yeah. Fighters. <laughs> okay, now, Latios coming back into the field here. Still Latios like, also not great here. Another dark type that it can't hit very well. The flip turn would be decent against this Landorus, but then you're forced to swap out again into the Colossal, which is not what you want right now. No. You could flip turn out maybe into. Maybe into Incineroar, bring Incineroar back out, keep weakening these Pokemon. It's a protect from Landorus once again. Owen. Oh, very the double protect. Here. Very, very patient. There's the fake out from Rillaboom. Getting found out by the detect. Nothing Tanners does here is going to matter. There it is, blocked out once again. And we're back to square one. Yeah, Owen's playing a very defensive game here. Really trying to stall out Danners, trying to stall out anything he can do. For sure. This is looking very strange for both sides. No one's really at an absolute advantage here, but Owen is just maintaining his pressure. He could turn this into an advantageous scenario. He's just waiting for Danners to commit a mistake, and he's going to exploit that to full effect. Yeah, one option that I don't think we'll see Owen play out, but an option that could play out is he. Wow! Is it one Focus HP? Ash? It is not Focus Ash Landers. He just lived on one. And the Sludge Bomb comes out, taking Rillaboom down very, very low. There's the Wicked Blow. Takes down Ladia. the AC 130 in one single strike. Wow. This is going to be Latios going down here. Now, what is he going to be forced to switch into here? The Woodhammer finally commits to the Landers and takes him down. Now both players, one Pokemon down, three to go. But more like 2.1 for Danners here as he only, this Rillaboom is on its last legs. Yeah, really, Rillaboom's not, got not much left. Latios is down and Sinroar is down. It is really up to Colossal to 1v3 this game. Yeah, Colossal doesn't have much sap boost to its name right now. And now with Rillaboom losing that attack as well, it's going to be a setting a duck once again, just handing out little hits here and there. With the, with the overheat here, might be able to take out the Incineroar here if they double commit the move, but one switch out can change this all here. There's the oh, fake there's out. Oh, there's the fake out. Stop the overheat. The Sucker Punch is going to eliminate Rillaboom, an amazing play from Owen. We need to see a 1v5, or 1v3 comeback here with Bake the Colossal. This is looking very, very dicey for Mr. Danners right now. He doesn't have much to answer against Owen's team. Just this single Colossal. Again, 
versed the world. <laughs> it really is. It really is a single colossal versus the world. There's the close combat. Eats it. Thank you. Defense falls to Urshifu. Maybe this is the chance he needs to get off a big heat wave. Gets off the heat wave. Does this take out the Incineroar? That's the question. Takes and it does. Incineroar. Oh! The focus Urshifu Sash. Urshifu lives on Sash. Wow, this is going down to the wire here. If that was a double KO, this could be very competitive. But just like that, the Rageable and the Urshifu still in this. This is looking. This is going to go over to Owen. Yeah, Owen really at the big advantage here. Raging Bolt almost at full. Urshifu living on Sash. He can't protect because Urshifu will just hit through protect. No, it doesn't have a lot of options here. Through Goes through Sucker, sucker punch. punch. And that's going to eliminate oh. it. Wow, look at that. And the first game is going to go over to Owen Mantha. I didn't think Sucker Punch could would knock out there, to be completely honest with you. That just goes to show how strong Urshifu is. And props to Owen. He played this very patiently and waited for the position to be perfect for him. He just knew how to play this one. Yeah, 100%. I am curious. I think the main... I... I do wonder if that was a roll on Sucker Punch. That possibly, was close. Possibly. Even then, it was two against one. If it was not the Sucker Punch, the Raging Bolt. I'm yeah. Sure. I think Raging Bolt well. would have closed out that match, but I think that Sucker Sucker Punch mattered. <laughs> I think it did. I but think. I'm sure that would have been followed by a thunderclap from Owen. And oh, probably. One thing that we need to address here. No coverage against Fairy Type on the side of Mr. Danners. No. I'm trying to see if a single Pokemon has a move here. And I'm not seeing any moves. No steel, no poison. On any of these Pokemon, yeah. There's nothing he can do against Terra Fairy Raging Bolt. No, so if you're Danners, what do you do here? What do you look to bring in? What do you look to change? I honestly don't know. You try and go for the sweep again, but Raging Bolt is just so tanky. If it's not super effective, you're not going to chip away at Adam enough. No, that is that is one of the harder things here. Maybe we'll see the bear Skuda show up this time. That could be interesting. Could be interesting, but once again, there's very few water type or things weak to water types on Mr. Owen's team. Sure the Landorus is and the Incineroar is, but overall things are not looking good for Mr. No. Manners. But the one thing that maybe is in Danner's favor here is that the Bear Skuda actually not running. The Bear Skuda is, um, is actually faster than the Fluttermane here. Yo, Just uh, by a bit, but not a lot. I have some personal trauma from this Bear Skuda. I was running Excadrill, Sandstream, <laughs> Excadrill, and... Full max speed IVs, full EV trained into speed, trying to be the fastest thing on the field. This Bear Skuda still beat me, one shot me. So this Bear Skuda, fastest thing alive. Don't think much can beat it, but this is an interesting first showing for Mr. Danner's going for the Whimsicott and Latios. Yeah, one interesting thing to note, we'll talk about it here. Fluttermane not running booster energy. That's pretty uncommon. We are actually seeing Owen's Fluttermane running choice specs. Which means if Danners did bring Barrascuta, Barrascuta would just outspeed and probably knock out Fluttermane in one hit. Potentially here, but I don't. we're not seeing the Fluttermane to start here or the Barrascuta. We're seeing Ogre Pond and Cineroar versus Latios and Whimsicott. Now this Ogre Pond, not going to be doing too much here, just going to be pumping out some consistent damage. Meanwhile, this Cineroar already debuffing the enemy team here. Yeah. Really, the minus attack doesn't affect Latios or Whimsicott that much. I mean, Whimsicott not a very strong special attacker, but it can still do some damage here. That fairy typing, very strong. There's Withdrawing Withdraw. Ogre Pond. I see. I think that smart Ogre Pond not going to be doing all too much here. Into this Landorus. Landorus. Already going to put on some pressure, but into Whimsicott. No grass coverage on this Whimsicott, though. So not a bad move. There's the Tailwind set up from Mr. Danners here. He's going for Fast and the Furious here as he goes for the Draco Meteor. Doing a lot of damage to this Incineroar, but not knocking it out here. Now, the flip turn looking to be committed. Both super effective, but if I know Owen, I have a feeling this is going to get protected out. 
Yeah, Owen's been playing a very defensive game. He knows that he can probably just keep playing defensive, and it's not gonna... He really can just stall out the game, get into himself into a better position. No! Moonblast right into Incineroar. Incineroar lives! Wow! Flip turn! No protect. No protect. Super effective, but not going to do all too much. No. Another swap out. What do you swap it into against this matchup? It's going to be the real boom for Mr. Danners. Going to set up that grassy terrain, try and improve the survivability. And with the Tailwind, this real boom is going to be very, very fast. Right, there's a Sludge, sludge bomb. bomb. That's going to do so much to Wimscott, eliminate Wimscott, but. Got the setup, got the Moonblast, did, did enough work. Yeah, Whimsicott did its job. I mean, Whimsicott is a Pokemon that... Oh, the Flare Blitz onto the Rillaboom! It's going to take a out of 10! But Incineroar is going to... Oh, the, the burn! burn! This is disastrous for oh. Mr. Danners. The swap in takes... The recoil takes out the Incineroar, thankfully enough. But this... Okay, Grassy Terrain goes first before the burn damage, so Rillaboom will live. <laughs> but just barely, that wow. dissolved damage, that negated the grassy terrain completely. And now this Rillaboom only has one more move before it is taken out of this battle. Well, the other issue with Rillaboom here especially is that it's burned, it's attack that is halved. That Rillaboom is really just sitting out there not going to be able to do a ton of damage. All you can do here is probably go for a fake out, try and stall this out just a little bit longer. With that grassy terrain, it gives you one more turn as long as you're not attacked here. Yeah, honestly here. We'll see what happens. We shall see. Now, what do you do on this Latios? You could try and just burst down this Landorus to the Draco Meteor. Or you can try and take out this Urshifu. I think you have to deal with the Urshifu here. The Urshifu is much more of a problem for the rest of uh, Danner's team. So you have to deal with Urshifu. There's the Protect coming out. And now that Luster Purge on Dolander is not going to be doing all too much. And the double protect. Oh, the protect. double protect. That is Owen just playing his defensive playstyle to pure perfection here. Here is Landorus protecting out the first one. There's the Wood Hammer from Reelaboom. Also going to get blocked out by the Landorus, the double commit there. But now Owen going to be very vulnerable in this next match, this next round. Yeah, the interesting thing, especially here with uh, going for the Woodhammer, is that he's guaranteeing that Rillaboom will go down. Still has Grass Train, still has the Tailwind, so he's going to hit a strong Woodhammer, but he's guaranteeing that Rillaboom will go down as Woodhammer does do that recoil damage. Yeah, I think he just wants to get the swap out while getting some consistent damage in, because this Rillaboom could just be dead weight if it sits around here too long, especially with the Intimidate taking down its attack. And the burn. Yeah, that burn, <laughs> it really just is a death sentence to Rillaboom. I mean, it was a great prediction by Owen that paid off, especially with that burn. I think if that burn doesn't happen, I think Dan is in a great position here. Still with Grassy Glide, still with that Grassy Terrain, can probably heal up a little bit. Withdrawing the Landorus. What is he swapping into? Ogre, Ogre Pond. Pond. Interesting. Ooh. That is going to be good looking into the future here. But for now... Not looking great. The Terra from Mr. Danners. Probably onto the Latios. There it is. What is the Terra type here? Steel. Very Ooh. good defensive typing here. But good. against the Urshifu. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to block out that Sucker Punch. Or that. Trying Urshifu to block low. out the Sucker Punch. Draco Meteor. Lot to Ogre Pond. Is the Woodhammer? Is this enough to take out Ogre Pond? It, it is. is enough. I think a grassy terrain would, or grassy gl glide would have been enough to take out Ogre Pond there. I think he just wants to swap out to try and play it this next matchup here. As we see, we're on the last one for Mr. Danners. There's a wicked blow. That's a good Terra Steel there, but the Ooh. crit just does so much. I know it's crit every time, but that just boosts That's its damage so that much, much damage. Low. more. <laughs> Yeah, so here we're going to see the final Pokemon Danner's team. It is going to be the Incineroar here versus the Landorus. It is a 2v2 matchup. The question is Tailwind is down now. Latios is a generally fast Pokemon on its own. Is it fast enough to still do some damage here, even with a minus two? That Draco Meteor is a great move, but it does sacrifice a lot of offensive potential down the road. Yeah, this is looking at very dire Mr. Danner's here. Just the Incineroar, last one on his team with this Latios. Not a good matchup, but it is a 2v2. 
protect from Owen Mantha coming out. I don't know, Eric, what are you thinking of this? I'm not shocked to see the double protect from Owen, but here's the issue. The double protect is going to give a lot of extra actual healing to Latios here. <laughs> yeah, this is looking like decent grassy terrain here, keeping this Latios up a little bit longer. And now... No, Latios doesn't get grassy terrain because it's a flying oh, Pokemon. Levitate. It's not touching the ground. Has levitate. Yeah. Yeah, this is not looking great. This Latios is going to be going down in the next turn or two. Leaving only this Incineroar to try and close out this match. But with both Detect and Protect being used by Owen, he's going to have to eat whatever comes his way this time. But there's the Terra. I think it's going to be on the Landers. No, it's on the oh, Urshifu. On the Urshifu. Going to that Terra Dark Urshifu, which really not a bad move. Because really, you know that Latios doesn't have a move for Urshifu here. So it becomes a lot harder. Oh, and the Sucker Punch comes out and even through that steel defensive coverage. It's not going to be enough when you're only at 22 HP. Yeah. There it is, Latios. Being eliminated here, knocked out, leaving only this Incineroar to go for the 2v1. The Earth Power comes through, takes it down in one hit, and Owen has won the set. Yeah, great plays there. I mean, Owen playing with the team he has built, Danner's playing with the team he threw together today to join our competition here. Wanted to get and join the fun, but some really great plays. Some really great plays all around. A nice little battle of the Saints here to start things off. But now with Owen advancing in with this Swiss tournament, we'll see how things go. I'm sure we'll see these players again. Yeah, I think we will. I think it's exciting to see what else will happen. Owen's team is incredibly strong. I think Dan has just got outplayed by a team that is built to destroy. And I think it, there's just an obvious, uh, not obvious, <laughs> but there is a blatant uh, hole in Mr. Danner's coverage here. Nothing to do with fairy type at all. No, which is really hard, especially in our current meta when you talk about Fluttermane, you talk about Terra Fairy being very common, and a lot of Pokemon needing that answer to deal with those, those fairy types. Yeah, and we do see some Terra Steel. There's defensive coverage there, but there's nothing to take down those fairies with enough speed and time. No, the other thing is he doesn't have a fairy type of his own. I mean, you saw him, he has a very psychic heavy team that really once it came out to Urshifu and Raging Bolt and Incineroar, that there just wasn't answers for this Pokemon with Latios being his main attacker. Yeah, the Latios was decent, but against any of these matchups, it just did not go well. No, it'll be exciting to see what he does moving forward and how he's able to take this team and pilot it for our next few matchups. Yeah, I'm looking forward to what we see next. But before that happens, we're probably going to throw it to a quick break soon enough. But before we do that, Eric, what are you hoping to see in the next game? I'm excited to see some fun Pokemon. We, we have a few of those players here, but that means we have some more exciting teams and we get to see some more fun things. Riley is playing today, and Riley is our, our resident creative master. We've seen him play a Reggie, that Reggie was, that team before. Funny. We've seen him play some funny teams, so I'm sure he'll bring out something interesting for us for stream today. Yeah, it's going to be up more interesting teams and more interesting experiences here in this stream. So we'll be right after a quick break, and we'll see you very soon.
Hello, right in the game. It is going to be Owen and Mantha, the victor of the last match, match going up against Riley Bates here in our second round of Swiss. All right, let's look at Riley's team here. This is an interesting team. We see Ente, Cresselia, Landorus, I, Gardevoir, Glamora, and Galarian Weezing. Neutralized. Okay, Glamora instantly goes down. Uh, is unfortunate, unable to set up any toxic spites. That is going to be that. <laughs> now we see the Sacred Fire on the Landorus doing it. A lot more damage than I thought. Does not get the burn though. Sacred Fire has a 50% chance to burn. It really not that important on Landorus Eye. Landorus Eye is a special attacker, but still would have been nice. Yeah, just to get that consistent turn by turn damage in case you can't quite get the finishing blow, especially after the interaction with Insen there. And now, yeah. what are these players going to switch into? So the Raging Bolt on the side of Owen. And let's see, is there any Fairy-type coverage on the side of He's got Riley? the Galarian Weezing. That is true. The yeah, Doug Dimodome of Pokemon. Also, no item on the Galarian Weezing. No, there's no item, but hey, have some fun with it. Who there, needs uh, items? Is there any reason for that? No. There no, he no may have just forgotten to put an item onto it. That is fine. It's fine. You don't need an item. You no. just have a Gusto here. You have the gumption to take this one down. Galarian Weezing, one of my favorite Pokemon to just look at. He does, he is a Doug Dimodome-esque type character he with is. his big hat. A very uh, oil tycoon-esque uh, turn of the century industrial revolution. And, and that is going to be... Let's not live the earth power. Yeah, that is his oil plant being upended by an earthquake right there. Or some earth power. Mother Nature always wins. There's the eruption. Eruption. Doesn't, Does it? It's not going to do a lot as that Entei. Yeah. Not doing too great right now. No, Entei was full health. But minus special attack from the party. Was shot. minus special attack. You are right. That's why I'm, I'm shocked you didn't go for the Sacred Fire. Uh, the machinations of Riley Bates' mind are not for us to peer into. No, Riley is one of our most wild players here at St. Clair. So you got to trust the process here. Exactly. I think he should swap out this Entei currently, as it is down twice in attack, once in special attack. You need to get this thing out of here. It's not going to be doing too much damage, as we have just seen. For the Lunar Blessing on Cresselia, Earth Power on the Entei, going to do a lot in a limited and from battle. <laughs> this Landris has three knockouts here. This Landris has been knocking out everything. We got to see some form of damage here from Cresselia. Not normally an offensive Pokemon, but hey, we'll see what happens. We shall see due time, my friend. And let's see. The Lunar Blessing comes out once more. Gonna heal up a little bit of that damage. Can yeah, still, heal up just a tad. Still have some on you. But <laughs> do you go for the Moon Blast when you know this Raging Bolt could Terra Fairy at any moment? I think you have to. What other options do you have? And Not the going Sludge to Bomb doesn't do a lot of damage there. Snarl, Snarl's gonna do a lot of damage. Gonna try and keep it doing nothing here. There's the Moon Blast. That's gonna just tickle this Raging Bolt, a very tanky one on the side of Owen. Yeah, forfeiting, really not shocked. Owen really did, or Riley really didn't have much position to get the W there. But no. a lot of time to adapt and get ready for a round two. And what, if you're Riley, are you going to bring in against this Landorus that has taken out most of your team? Do you have anything here that can deal with that. I think you have to bring in your own Landorus. I think the only way to deal with a Landorus is using your own Landorus. And you have to hope for a Stone Edge or a Rock Slide to deal a ton of damage into that own Landorus. Riley's team is fairly susceptible to ground-type attacks. Uh, yes. Uh, the Cresselia immune to them. So you could throw out the Glamour once again, fake it out, swap it out, try and stall this out just a little bit further. But... <laughs> See Owen there being bashful in front of the camera. Having a very hot win streak, not losing a single game so far. Yeah, I think Cresselia, if anything, needs to look for the trick room here. If they get the trick room uh, off, that could be very helpful. I think your summation is correct here, Mr. Eric. But yeah, our trick room from Gardevoir. Gardevoir is running trick room. That and it did do good damage. It just needs to be in the right position, I believe, for it. Yeah, going up against that lander is not a great position for an Entei. No, not very good at all. But 
as we're getting into our second match, what do you think the opening uh, four we're going to see here is going to be? I wouldn't be shocked if we see something pretty similar. If we see... I, I think if you're Owen, you just lead Landorus. Landorus is so offensively dominant in this matchup that why not just open with it? That's true. Put the pressure on early and see what Riley can do. Yeah, I just go the Landorus instant once again, run it back, and honestly, Riley does not have much on his team to answer. There it is. Oh, the Ogre Pond lead as well. Just trying to go full offense here. Uh, with the Guard of War and the Glamora. Glamora, not the worst matchup into Ogre Pond, but not the best either. Not the best for that Landorus specifically. That Landorus is very scary. And now, if Riley had an Ogre Pond, that would be a good thing to take down this Landorus, but unfortunately, I'm gonna find one on his side here. There's, There's the, Earth, the power. Earth Power. Not even getting the Toxic Debris, not even getting a single move. Glamora can be taken down. Now, as we move in, will this Ivy Cudgel take out Riley's Guard of War here? Let's it see. Does. It does. This is just looking like an Owen dominated game. You can see, he has, I don't want to say that Riley's Pokemon may not be EV trained or IV trained, but it, it might be the case with how squishy they are right now. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is, Owen is playing a very dominant meta team right now. He is, he is. Which but is usually hard Usually you'd expect one of these Pokemon to maybe take a hit. Yeah, I mean, Cresselia can take a hit. Landorus can maybe take a hit. I think you have to tear a Landorus here. Oh yeah, that Ivy. Well, the tear is ground, so maybe not. I think I think you have to Terra and just try. Uh, yeah, because you don't want to take the water. You don't want to take the Ivy Cudgel. Not the Ivy Cudgel, and then if you Terra ground, you're weak to grass. You lose that flying coverage. Yeah, you really do. But I think we're gonna see the Terra Cresselia to try and boost its damage here, hoping for this Lunar Pokemon to carry him to victory. Yeah, Cresselia is a really interesting Pokemon. I really like Cresselia's Pokemon. It's a Pokemon we don't get to see very often anymore. Don't but you look it. at most Trick Room teams really liking Cresselia. Oh no, Cresselia special attack here is not going to like this terrestrialization on the side of Owen. He's not leaving any mercy here. No, absolutely none. That special defense boost and the substitute. The substitute feels unnecessary at this point. Hey, he's a defensive gamer. Maybe we even see a spiky shield. No, we're seeing the Ivy Cudgel. Terra Ivy Cudgel will surely take down this Landorus in yeah. one clean swipe, leaving this Cresselia once again to be the last remaining Pokemon. Yeah, if there is one thing we know about Owen, Owen is a very defensive oh, no. player. Oh, really not doing a lot. A special attack drop, not super important for Cresselia, but could be important on other Pokemon. Yeah, for sure. It could be very important indeed, but... At this point, the 4v1 is not looking good. The Sludge Bomb gonna not do all too much as this Cresselia is tanky, but this Ivy Cudgel with the Terrestrialization will surely take it down, especially if there's a crit there. Yeah, I think what today shows, if I've only seen Owen in two matches, I think Owen is a player to look out for when we go into the Tetra Cup series over the May Long Weekend. And May Long Weekend, Owen, we haven't actually seen it any of our PCs really as he's been so busy doing other Saints thing and running all of our a lot of other programs here at St. Clair. Yeah, but once we're in the off season, maybe we'll see Owen, especially after such a victorious run through these Swiss matches. He's now looking through the favorite to take this one all the way to the end, but he still has another matchup going on right now. It is also going to be Danners versus... Oh. Brandley. Brand Bradley, yeah. Bradley, Bradley Van Kint there. Going to be his Ooh. opponent coming up next. But... All that being said, Owen looking very good. Riley, I'm glad he was here. He made sure this thing can run. So, props to him for even showing up here today. Yeah, and remember, if you want to do donate, exclamation mark, extra life, give you the link to donate. We'd love if you could help us out here today. We did receive a $100 donation from, from an anonymous donor, so thank you for that. A mysterious benefactor. Thank you very much, whoever donated that money. We did get, I did just see a $20 donation roll in, so I'm going to see where that ended up. Let's see. But 
I know where Owen's going to end up. He's going to be advancing here. It's it's not an advancement thing, but he's going to be matched up with whoever has won the most Swiss rounds. So maybe, could we see? Oh, no, everyone's going to get to play each other, so it's most likely going to be Bradley and Van Kint. Oh, Joseph, our person running the stream today, just for don uh, running the club stream right now, just donated $20. So thank oh, you, Joseph. Awesome. Yeah, shout out to Joseph. But... Moving on, our next match is going to be the final one here today. So who will come out with the most wins? That is the question we're asking ourselves, and we'll have the answer after a quick break. And hello everybody, we are here in Swiss round three, the final VGC match we have here today. We have Bradley versus Owen Mather Hybrid. Yeah, this is this should be a very competitive match. We see that Owen, we've seen Owen's team off today, so let's go over Bradley's team today. We have Rillaboom, Incineroar, Fluttermane, Urgifu, Rapid Strike, Ogre Pond, Hearth Flame, or Tornadus Incarnate. Yeah, both very competitive teams on both sides, so this is a more typical VGC matchup in this era, in this regulation. So I'm excited to see who will pilot these a little bit better. Yeah, I think the big differences we're seeing here is Fluttermane running that booster energy to get that speed boost. It will be probably the fastest thing on the field today. 
And the other thing is the Urshifu Rapid Strike. Urshifu Rapid Strike looking to be very strong, but we have single strike on the other side of Owen, and Owen coming off a hot streak of just win after win after win. He's 2-0 right now. Well, he'd be the three-time Triple Deluxe champ getting the 3-0 the <laughs> run back. That is the question here. We're seeing the picks on the side of Bradley. Mr. Van Hint here. See it. The Flutter main start with the Incineroar start, followed by Real Boom and a Hearth Flame, Ogre Pond. Yeah, I think actually the interesting thing here is the Hearth Flame into Owen here. Owen has shown that he is a much more defensive player, and this Ogre Pond Hearth Flame is running Sword Stance. If Owen defends at the wrong time, that could allow Ogre Pond to get a Sword Stance, plus that attack boost from going into Terra Fire, that could lead to a dangerous position. Definitely, if he gets into the right position, the setup sweepers are definitely going to throw off Owen's defensive coverage, but I know Owen is probably prepared for this. He probably knew he could flex that defensiveness against the, his opponents who didn't have all too much in setup. So I believe Owen might be able to pilot this one very effectively. All right, we're seeing a pretty common start here from Owen. We are seeing that Raging Bolt and that Incineroar once again versus the Incineroar and the Fluttermane. Up the double in intimidate not going to do all too much except for those inflicting them. These incineroars not going to be doing all too much. No, really, it's the incineroars causing more damage to themselves. There's a protosynthesis there from booster energy that Fluttermane looking to just go loud here in this first round. Oh, it is a ooh, ooh. So Bradley is calling the double protect, and we're seeing that calm mind again. We know that Owen is a more defensive player, he might defend or Terra Fairy into protect, Terra Fairy into something else. Well, he has no protect on either oh, of his Pokemon. Terra Fairy Electro Web? That could be an option here, trying to slow down this I wouldn't be shocked train. actually if we see Terra Fairy Snarl, to be honest. Oh, there's a fake out. Fake out into the Incineroar. Did they both do the fake out? Could have been, could have been a speed tie right there. The yep. Calm Mind there's is the calm successful. Mind. It's gonna be good at getting a little bit more survivability and damage here. Let's see. There's, There's the Electro Web, trying to lower the speed of both the Pokemon oh, here. Oh, a critical hit as well. That Just critical hit might matter later down the game. Yeah. As we all know, Fluttermane, Glass Cannon. So any amount of damage is going to be add up over time. The the one issue here that I think with o that Owen made was Terra Fairing right off the bat. Because now you know that Fluttermane isn't going to Moonblast. He has to, unless he wants to swap out this Raging Bolt. And the Terra Fairy Raging Bolt amazing type coverage right oh now. it's great type coverage but it now now the question is Snarl not gonna do anything really lower the Incineroar but the Incineroar does not care no, it does not there's the parting shot gonna be Ooh. protected out as well so now this Incineroar are gonna be a sitting duck for one more turn meanwhile Bradley gonna be able to get out of here so the interesting thing then is that Owen did not go for fake out the first turn with his Incineroar Otherwise, his fake out would have gone first. Oh, it was not a speed tie. It's not a speed tie. I think Owen's Incineroar is slightly faster. Interesting, interesting. Now we see the grassy surge come up from the Reelaboom, boosting the survivability of this <laughs> of this Fluttermane even more. And if he can get another Calm Mind off, it's not even going to matter if... <laughs> it's not going to matter if it's Terra Fairy. This thing's just going to be doing the d damage even through not very effectiveness. Well, the issue here, as much as Fluttermane is a glass cannon, it is a physical glass cannon. Fluttermane has an incredible special defense stat of 135. It is almost as specially defensive as it is offensive. Oh, so that's a thing sure. to take into account. So really, that Raging Bolt is sort of stuck there trying to deal damage, but it can't. And the Fake Out going to stall the Incineroar even more, leading... Probably that was going to be a parting shot from Owen's side, so this Calm Mind going to come out once again. The double special attack. This is looking to be a sweeper right here. Going for the Snarl, so it'll just be a plus one special attack, uh, Fluttermane, but it will have that plus two special defense. Yeah, it's going to be tanky, even if you want to try and get out of here. What does he have in terms of physical attack? Is this Incineroar not going to be able to do all too much because it got its attack lowered in earliest stages of this game, the Intimidate. Yeah, we were seeing Bradley playing actually very defensive here. He hasn't taken that opportunity to strike. He's waiting for Owen to maybe change something up, go for something else, and then find that area to strike. 
Yeah, both are very patient players right now, but I would say Bradley in the better position right now. The setup on this Flutter main, he's looking very, very good. But going forward, this is looking to be very interesting. We're having a little bit of a connection stop, but it's fine. That's just the nature of the game right now. What do you think is going to happen next, Eric? I don't know. I think if you're Owen, you have to change something up here. You have to find a new avenue as much as that's what Bradley wants. Owen needs to do something and start playing a bit more offensive. Bradley is in full control here. He has the game in his hands. Yeah, he's controlling the pace right now. There's the Electra web. Not going to do all too much. Sure, you lower the speed of the Rillaboom, but right now I think you're faster than the Rillaboom on all fronts. Flare Blitz going to get knocked out or blocked out once again. And if I am familiar with Bradley's game, I think we're going to see another Calm Mind next turn. Yeah, do you Calm Mind again? I mean, that's the hard question here. I mean, really, the fact that Owen hasn't switched out this Incineroar yet is a little shocking. This Incineroar is now at minus two. It needs to sort of get out of here and bring something in stronger that can start dealing, putting on more pressure. Well, I think he really wants to parting shot this Fluttermane, but he could just parting shot someone else here. But with the fake out being <laughs> hovered here, you might just want to hard swap out this Incineroar. Yeah. I would be shot. Yeah, there we go. If we see another fake out, this is going to be rough for Owen. Yeah. Uh, we do. We are seeing a fake out. Bradley is locked in the fake out, so we'll see what happens here. How will this one shake down? I think we're going to see another Snarl from Owen trying to keep this Flutterman in check as he knows it has to be around just that much longer. Oh, here it is. Time is loading. The battlefield is set. The grassy train up. There's a hard swap out from Owen. There we go. That's what we need to see. We need to see Owen make a play. But into the Flutterman, that Flutterman is going to eat a plus one Moonblast. Potentially. Or we could eat a fake out here. And there it is. Nice swap out into the ghost type. Oh, the moon blast. Doesn't get the knockout. And the snarl going to come through. And now we're back to square one aside from the special defense tank. That is Bradley's Fluttermane. Now we're here in a relatively neutral state. Still Bradley in the lead right now. Oh, there it is. There's the Terra Fairy onto the Raging Bolt, just trying to knock this thing out. Changing his mind, gonna look at some other options here. I think if you go for the Shadow Ball, not a bad play here, it might just protect. He knows that Owen has choice scar or has the choice specs, so really he's gonna see what this Fluttermain wants to do. He knows this Fluttermain is gonna be offensive and it's gonna be locked into whatever it picks. It picks Shadow Ball. Gonna be blocked out. Once again, just stalling this one out, making sure this Incineroar can take as much stats away from the enemy as it can. Probably going to go for a parting shot, I would guess. It's Fluttermane. Oh, it's the Flare, Blitz, the Flare Blitz. Blitz. I mean, again, Fluttermane really physically weak. Doesn't have a lot of HP, um, HP base points. It doesn't have a lot of defense base points. So really, anything physical can sort of just poke it and it'll fall over. <laughs> and now... Owen losing his first Mon. Gonna be a pretty tough position to be in right now. Sure, you can swap back to the Incineroar, try and get yourself back into the same game state, but no, we're seeing the swap out into Ogre Pond, which I like here. You can maybe get a special defense boost here. Oh wait, no, he already Terra'd. He did already oh. Terra, that's... So, you're looking at just a plain Water Ogre Pond here. Just default Water Ogre Pond here, the Grass Water typing to come through here but will the swap out come through for Bradley now you're being threatened to buy an Ivy cudgel and you don't have too many good options to swap into this Ogre Pond putting a lot of pressure on you now yeah you do need to find an option to deal with the to deal with the Ogre Pond there the good thing the good advantage here is you still have Terra available to you Yes, you're right. Bradley has not committed the Terra yet, so he's still looking for the opportunity to do so. There it is. There is our little favorite Ogre Pond here, but this one is Fire Ogre Pond. And now, especially with this, what's on the field right now, I think we might see a Sword Stance come through. 
if he can put enough pressure, he wants to threaten the fake out right here with the real boom so he can draw out the spiky shield on the next turn. Sure, the Ivy Culture comes through. Oh, and the one shot! The crit comes through and takes out the Ogre Pawn. And now we're in a pretty even scenario. Yeah. I mean, that Rillaboom is going to eat up that Dragon Pulse. I don't think it should do too much. It does not. Plus, with that Grassy Train heal. But wow, I did not think that would one shot. What a great move by Owen, committing the Ivy Cudgel. And now this Ivy Cudgel should be able to run through most of the team, but this lowered attack is gonna make it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, that lowered attack's gonna put a lot of pressure. Once again, so many fake outs to have to maneuver through here. This Raging Bolt, I gotta say, not doing too much for Owen. No, Raging Bolt is sort of a sitting duck, especially in this matchup here. Gets the fake out, really just locks it in place. Sure, this Raging Bolt is good for debuffing, but wow, that Wood Hammer taking it down very low. Now Bradley moving in for the knockout punch here. Yeah, I would. That Raging Bolt is probably within grassy terrain terra, uh, area here, so you can probably glassy, grassy glide into it. Yeah, maybe, probably. But do you want to take that risk? You can potentially get a low roll with that grassy glide, but looks like might have his eyes on another target. No, he realizes he doesn't want to go for the risk. He's going to go for a wood hammer. Could do a lot of damage to this Ogre Pond too. It's not resistant to this grass coverage. No, the gra Grassy Glide, I don't hate the Terra on the Incineroar. Really, you know that if this fl if this Ogre Pond doesn't go down, then it's going to take out Fluttermane. Fluttermane is also very effective on its own without the Terra. So you probably don't need to Terra Fluttermane down the road, so why not defensive Terra the Incineroar here? Yeah, the Ivy Casual comes out on the Incin. Not gonna do all too much though, especially with the lowered attack. The Dragon Ball is also committed. Not gonna do too much either. This is going to be a very slow game for Owen going forward. Lives the Wood Hammer though. Has a little bit more kick left in it, but I think not the Flare Blast. Knockout blow for Ogre Pond. And now, Owen is just down back to the starting lineup of Incineroar and this Raging Bolt. And here we are. Meanwhile, look over Bradley. I think he still has three, no? This Fluttermane not taken down yet. It's yeah, low. Yeah, Fluttermane is still hiding in the back there for Bradley. So he can still use that and bring that back in later. I think he wants to remove Incineroar and he knows that Fluttermane can probably take care of Raging Bolt on its own. Yeah, but now Owen in a really tough position here. Sure, he has a fake out, but he should use the fake out. No, he has the speed advantage here. He can maybe try to stop one of these attacks from taking down his Raging Bolt, but so many choices to make here. Not a, not a lot of time left. Yeah, I'd be shocked if we don't see the fake out onto the Rillaboom here. He's actually not going for the fake out. He wants to remove something from the field. Probably going to try and remove that Rillaboom. He's going for this Incineroar, very, very low. Woodhammer gonna take out this Raging Bolt for sure. And now this is looking at best to be a 2v2 scenario, or a 2v1 scenario. Yeah, 2v1 at best here, and also with Fluttermane at full HP and has the Speed Tie and has the Moon Blast. Here it is, lowered attack, parting shot. Gonna just make this Incineroar not going to be doing very much going forward. Just a dead weight on the team, but can you really call it a team when it's just one Incineroar? Listen, Incineroar has carried many teams on its back. We'll see if it's able to do it again. There's the Flare Blitz knocking out the Rillaboom, but now gives Incineroar a switch back into the field here. Yeah, the lowered attack is going to be very rough here, especially after the parting shot as well. You can even commit a fake out next turn. Knock this, let the Cineroar not be able to do much of anything at all. With no no protect in sight as well from Owen. This first battle is definitely gonna go over to Bradley. Going to call mine just because why not? Going for the disrespect blow, but no, there's the FF from Owen, and that's what we expect to see here after great maneuverability from Bradley. Oh yeah, some great maneuvers by Bradley there really took Owen's slow play game and turned it against him. Was able to find these places to set up the call mines to put on the pressure and put Owen out of the driver's seat. Yeah, this is looking very good so far 
for Owen, or I mean for Bradley, but I think that starting lineup for Owen just wasn't working for him. That Raging Bolt, usually a very strong pick, didn't do all too much. It was decent in the early game, but it doesn't really threaten much of anything on the side of Bradley. No, it didn't. But we'll see how he's able to change it for the future and going forward, make those team adjustments and figure out what he needs to do to get the W. I'll also shout out, we had a new donation incentive from the Bidoof Supremacy. We do love these Bidoofs. <laughs> $15 True. from our friends, the Bidoofs. The Let's greatest go. Gen 4 Pokemon ever to exist. For sure. Definitely the greatest Gen 4 Pokemon. He carried us on our backs throughout that entire region, for sure. Really, what would Gen 4 be without Bidoof? Yeah, no surf, no rock climb, no rock smash. No. What else does he have? Yeah, I think he can learn cut as well. Yeah, if he, he can also learn surf, you get to a barrel. Yep. <laughs> really, Badoof just the star of Gen 4, and we wouldn't be here without Badoof. Exactly, he carried us all the way here. When are we going to see a Badoof? Is Badoof in Scarlet Violet? I don't know if Badoof is in Scarlet or Violet. Maybe within the next couple of regulations, they'll add him in here. <laughs> Bring Bidoof back to Scarlet and Violet. This is my campaign for Bidoof. Maybe with the upcoming game. Maybe we'll even see Mega Bidoof become a thing with uh, Pokemon Legends on the way. Yeah. And here we go into game two here. Let's see what they do. Yeah, let's see here. There's the Insin Ogre Pond starting double du duo for Owen. And now looking at the other side, Bradley starting off with a very strong pick of his own. Yeah, actually not a great position for Bradley. Both of these are very physical Pokemon, and you don't want to see that Ogre Pond with the, all these strong water type attacks, the special defense boost, really puts Fluttermane in a bad position. He needs to move Fluttermane out of the starting position. Yeah, he needs to get out of here and quick. Things are not looking very good here, especially with both of his physical attackers being debuffed here. Not too many good positions to be in from here on out. Now, time is ticking, and we shall see the commit soon enough, but what will it be? I'm curious to see. Now, Owen, not too many options. I think he's going to stick this one out. I don't see Owen swapping out. He's kind of a little more of a stagnant player. Doesn't like those quick swap outs back and forth all too much. Yeah, Fake Out actually can deal some damage to his own Incineroar there. A great move there by Owen. The Shadow Ball, though, going into the Incineroar, maybe he thought that the Incineroar was going to Terra? Maybe he was expecting a swap out as well into Fluttermane, trying to get a different matchup here, but overall, really good round from Owen. Yeah, some great maneuvers by Owen there. I'd love to see this game, this series, go to a best of three for our final game of the day. It would be great. Both these players at 2-0. Two, two oh. It would be crazy if it didn't go to a third game but you know Bradley is being very vicious here you can tell he wants to eke out this win very quickly now there's the protect coming out from the flutter main there's the ivy cudgel going to be blocked out by that protect for sure neither of these players really focusing taking on these incinerators which is interesting as they're both a pain in the neck for both of them yeah, that's sort of the thing with Incineroar. Incineroar is extremely annoying, but also its damage output isn't great. So you can sort of leave it on the field and come back for it at the end of the game. You just have to be prepared to deal with Incineroar existing for the rest of the game. See, Bradley's also running the same lineup that won him the last game. Hopefully we'll be able to see that Ogre Pond Hearthflame do more damage this turn. Yeah, maybe that just got taken down. That first one, great play by Owen in that last game, but will he be able to take it down this time? We shall see. There's the Mold Breaker ability is not going to be doing all too much now. As we see, the Protect comes through one more time. Now, going into the next round. Yeah, I, part of me is shocked that Owen didn't go for the Flare Blitz again. Is it a chance that you don't get the knockout? Yes. I don't know if it was a low roll or a high roll on that Flutter main the first time. But it's around 50%. You could Flare Blitz and hope to maybe just knock out that Flutterman last turn. Yeah, you could go for that gamble, but I think Owen's not the type to do that. He likes consistency. He likes knowing that what he's going to do will be rewarded here. But right now, if he goes for that Ivy Cudgel quick drop out here, the Ogre Run. No, he doesn't. He's going to go for the swap out. Into the Urshifu. Urshifu's back out here. And Single Strike is going to be... Very threatening against this uh, 
This Fluttermane here. There's the Moonblast. Not doing it's all too not much. Not take out Incineroar. And the Parting Shot. And the Ogre Pond. And it gets blocked out. But good play. Good not play. Not all too much. Yeah, Owen really isn't having much luck getting these uh, Parting Shots off. This is the second time that he's been protected out. So will he go for it a third time, knowing that the chances of it being protected for a third time in a row are pretty low? I don't. I think so. I think he can now do it on this Ogre Pawn if he wants to, but he just needs to threaten. Yeah, there we go. You see the swap out come out from the Fluttermane. We're going to see the Rillaboom here. Rillaboom's setting up that grassy terrain, which is interesting. Yeah, very interesting start here. Just bringing up the survivability of his whole team here. With the grassy glide wow. from the Ogre Pawn now breaking the Sash. There it is. Wicked Blow going to come through. Do a lot of damage here. And the parting shot being committed on to this Ogre Pond. He's not going to be doing all too much now. No, I wouldn't be shocked if we see the switch from the Ogre Pond here. Next turn, already at minus one. If then Sinor comes back out, it's at minus two. Don't really want to be in that position. No, sir. But what is Owen's last Mon here? It is Landorus. Don't know if that's the best switch in right now. But going forward, I think it's a powerful pick. Yeah. So here, here's the big question. Sucker Punch does it knock out Rillaboom. If Sucker Punch knocks out Rillaboom, Owen's in a great position. Let's protect from Landorus. Let's see what happens next. There's the Detect. Once again, there's that defensive play from Owen. But will there be a setup on the side of the Sucker Punch? Does he try and Sword Stance instead of swapping out? Let's see. Yes, he does! He goes for the Sword Stance instead of swapping out. And now, I believe he'll be plus one. Yeah, he'll be plus one in this position here. Interesting, Owen didn't swap back to the incinerator to try and lower the attack. Oh wait, no, he swapped out with Parting Shot, my bad. But still, we might see that swap out come through just to get the Intimidate off to try and damper this Ogre just a bit more, because double Sword Stance. It's not going to be Sword Stance this time, but I think next turn, one more, this Ogre Pond will be very, very scary to deal with. Yeah, Terra Fire, the Terra on the Ogre Pond here also going to give it an attack boost. So it's plus one with the attack boost from the Terra. It's going to be hitting really hard. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see Incineroar come out and swap out for that Landorus. I think Urshifu is great here. Urshifu can really hit through anything. So you probably want to leave that Urshifu out. Yeah, this Urshifu looking pretty... Like a, uh, very Ooh, double Terra. But it's still very, very weak defensively. There's double Terra. Terra poison on the Landorus. Trying to get that Sludge Bomb, wants to knock out that Rillaboom. Gives you defensive coverage against Grass as well, which is the main pressure on the field right now. Sucker Punch does not take out the Rillaboom. That's really important here. Very important. There's the Ivy Cudgel being committed from Bradley. Let's see how much that does. Double attack boost gonna eliminate that Landorus. Yeah, I would have been shocked if Landorus survive that and that puts Owen into a rough position he now has lost his Terra he's going up against a Rillaboom and a Ogre Pond that are really hungry for sure they are just brutal right now such strong physical attackers he doesn't have much to answer no he doesn't we'll see what he can do pull something out of his bag of tricks Incineroar being sent out on the side of Owen, getting the Intimidate, which is a good play, trying to weaken this physical <laughs> brawl fest right happening right now as much as he possibly can. And now, Spike Shield being committed by this Ogre Pond. going to stall this one out, as he knows Owen just wants to burst this one down, but will Owen have the foresight to see this coming? He could still hit through it with, uh, with uh, Urshifu. Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't be shocked if he hits through it with Urshifu. Protect is... That's why Urshifu is such a monster. That Unseen Fist ability to hit through anything is so damaging. Yeah, it's such a good pick here, but he has a few choices to make the Rillaboom very low, but maybe getting swapped out. A few possibilities. Not going to get swapped out, though. There it is. The Fake Out from Incineroar. Ooh, that's going to sting a little bit here. That is still a spiky shield, and some are being hurt. Now the Sucker Punch. Takes out the Rillaboom. Good play, good play. He's not in the worst position possible, but still Owen is clamoring here. Meanwhile, Bradley is just controlling the narrative. 
Yeah, I think if you're Owen, you're a little you're a little more dicey. You know that that actually the big thing is that Fluttermane's still in the back. If if Owen loses Urshifu, I don't know if he can come back. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Well, was Ogre Pond eliminated on Owen's side? I can't quite remember. I think Ogre Pond did go down. Okay, so yes, you're right. He won't have very much to deal with that. Well, in center, or is almost out here as well. So I think if this Urshifu goes down, that's gonna be it for Owen. Is... We're gonna use the fake out into the Ivy Cudgel. I don't think Incineroar can live this. Oh, there's the fake out. It's the double IG IV Cudgel. Yes, that is for sure going to eliminate this Incineroar. And now, this is it. Owen is on the line here. Just this Urshifu, as far as we know, against the world. I think he might still have this Ogre Pond here in the game. If he does still have Ogre Pond, that's great. He is still in a very scary position. Yeah, now. he does. Does still have Ogre Pond. Good typing against everyone, everything. He did not get hit with uh, the Intimidate either. So he's still looking decent decent so far. If he spiky shields here to block out the parting shot, he can stall out this Incineroar here. No spiky shield. He's going pure offensive, probably into the Hearth Flame Ogre Pond. Does Ivy Cudgel get the one-shot knockout? I believe it does. Let's see. It does! It does! And now he is in a 1v2 scenario with the parting shot about to come through from this Incineroar. He's not going to be hitting very hard. No, he's only minus one. The question is, what do you do on this final turn here? This is actually still winnable for Owen. It for sure is. Yes, it's very, very winnable indeed. But... Your options are very, very limited. Ooh, because of that parting shot, Ogre Pond is going to go down to minus two. Does a minus two it's, Ogre Pond... I don't think it's minus two. Is, it? is parting shot minus two attack? Parting shot is minus one, but now he's going to get intimidated oh, again to go down to minus right. two. I forgot about the swap out with this parting shot. I thought it wouldn't go through and down to the last one, but he still had that empty slot counting as a Pokemon. Yeah. Allowing him to get the Intimidate out. Amazing gameplay from Bradley here. The Spiky Shield doing to stall this out a bit longer, but maybe we see a Calm Mind read from Bradley. The Fake Out comes through. Dealing a little bit of damage, but at this point in the game, that damage isn't going to matter. That damage... There's the Calm Mind. So we are looking at the face of a plus one Plus one Fluttermane versus an Ogre Pawn. Who is faster and will it knock out? That is the question that I do not have the answer to. I think this Fluttermane is going to be faster here. I don't see this Ogre Pawn being faster. And even if it is, it's going to go into a Protect, unfortunately. Yeah. There it is. Does he get the read? No, he does not. Owen, unfortunately take this one out there's the parting shot Bradley making this slow and guaranteed removing all potential plays from Owen here yeah that minus three ogre pond now here's the interesting thing with Ivy cudgel it has a boosted crit rate so it has a 20% chance to crit if this crits it does not crit wow he needed that minus three that's a good that's a good read on the calc though I that minus two probably would have knocked out yeah, that is going to be a good round here. An amazing final game on display here today. Great reads all around. Amazing run from Owen, but it's going to be Bradley having that much of a better run here. Amazing reads, amazing calculations, and that's what Pokemon's all about. Congratulations to Bradley here for winning the most rounds of Swiss today. Yeah, some amazing gameplay there. I think it's up. To Bradley was just able to read Owen better, take that defensive strategy that Owen is playing and change it up a little bit and push it against him. With that, he had access to that Calm Mind. He has access to that Sword Stance that if Owen chose to be more defensive, it would punish him a lot. For sure. But overall, great rounds all around from everybody. And that's Pokemon VGC for today. An amazing showing. Some great games, some highs, some lows. And we got good variety of teams in there all around all skill levels as well yeah a nice little show off of some of the events that happened here at st Clair. 
Again, we still have a lot going on today. We still have a sealed TCG format where you'll get your own deck of Pokemon cards for $20 wow. if you come down today. We also have, later today, we have a St. Clair Classic, some rock, paper, scissors happening. Some, we have some background and we have some Beyblades. All of those will be provided. Down for only $5 today for all three of those events. Wow, only $5. Only $5. That's a pretty good deal. And all of the money is going deal. to charity. We have some really fun raffle prizes here. We hope you come down if you're watching at home and you're like, I don't have anything to do tonight. Come down, have some fun with us here down in the Nexus. Yeah, if you have some free time, stop by. Or, and if you don't have free time, donate some money. You know, if you have the money to spare, it would go to a good cause and we'd very much appreciate it over here. But with all that being said, we're going to close things up here on the casting desk, but we might see you later on the separate stream. So we are going to go through the exit ceremony right now. So let's get on with the thankings. Thank you, Amanda, for operating the stream. Thank you, Daniil in the back for holding the sounds. Thanks for Mr. Danish for organizing our shifts and making sure everybody's in the right place. Thank you for joining me up here on the desk, Eric. Thank you, everybody at home, for watching us up here. And of course, we can't forget to thank our sponsors, Tim Hortons, HyperX, St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. I can't forget Subway. I think I already said Subway, but we love Subway over here. The cookies are to die for. But with all that <laughs> being said, we're going to close things up over here, and we'll see you next time, probably on Monday, for another Saint stream. We'll see you then, everybody. All that being said, we're going to close things up here on the casting desk, but we might see you later on the separate stream. So, go through the exit ceremony right now. So, let's get on with the thankings. Thank you, Amanda.